it's that time of year when everyone's thinking about new year's resolutions and um the gym the, the car park gym here is absolutely packed and it's no surprise everyone wants to um get fit for the new year but generally i'm not one for new year's resolutions For me, if you need to make a New Year's resolution, um, you should have done something about it before because um, the chances are you won't stick to it because if you were that bothered, you would have done something about it before. But that said, this year I am going to make one uh, resolution to myself um, and that is about um, the amount of coffee cups I go through. I, I realised having done a lot of these videos and editing them, I am always um, carrying around a disposable coffee cup and um, it can't be right. So uh, for that reason, I got a couple of this, um, these reusable ones for Christmas and some good ones as well, not the usual rubbish that I've had before that leak everywhere. Uh, and I am gonna make a resolution that I'm gonna have one of these with me all the time. So whenever I get a takeaway coffee, I'm gonna put it in one of these cups. Um, and hopefully, um, because the other ones can't be recycled, do my bit. Uh, so let's hope I can manage to stick to that. If you see me with a disposable one, you have my permission to abuse me on the comments section. Um, but with that in mind, I'm off now to try and refill my cup for the first time. Well, that was easy. And Oh, it even tastes better out of this cup. No, it doesn't. Um, but that's it, I've done my bit, and let's hope I can remember to bring one of those cups every time with me. Now, uh, today, what I wanna talk about is uh, the future, 2018. Uh, what can we expect uh, in the way of new vehicles, uh, or EVs, to actually arrive um, here in the UK in 2018? And um, I'm hoping where possible i can give you a bit of a month by month breakdown of um, what to expect and when um, and just talk a bit about each of the cars it's all a bit tight in here um, right we're away now the first car i want to talk about um, should be released sometime in january i think worst case scenario beginning of february so I'm, i understand but um it's the new nissan leaf and um, probably the, the one EV that's going to have most influence on me over the next year. Whether I actually end up buying one or not, um, I definitely I, I want to get to know that car inside out. It, um, let's start with the negatives because I want to get those out of the way. To me, it's still a facelift. They deny it. Nissan is saying it's not a facelift. All right, let's call it a um, nip and tuck with a chemical peel. There's an awful lot of things stolen from this generation leaf put into the new one. It just sits in with the way Nissan are designing their cars at the moment. Uh, I don't find it particularly inspiring, but that said, it's not unattractive. You know, it, it's a nice looking car. It's not going to stand out in a crowd, but um, likewise, it's not an ugly car. So, uh, you know, a bit of good and bad there. That's the negatives out of the way. The positives are um, the price point at the moment is give or take a few pounds exactly the same as the outgoing leaf but for that you get an awful lot more for your money you get um, this pro pilot which to all intents and purposes uh, is a very very low level autopilot it will um, control the speed the distance it will keep you in a lane uh, add on to that the one pedal driving which all right is nothing new uh, but it's it's a feature that they're really making something of and you can bring the car to a stop without touching the brake i'm really interested in trying that out looking further ahead there is going to be a 60 kilowatt hour battery oh that reminds me so it's a 40 kilowatt hour battery uh, the 0 to 60 times are up it's slightly bigger inside uh, it's it is a better car all round uh, later in the year maybe into 2019 we're looking at 60 kilowatt hour battery there we go, home now, and um, before I start taking down all these Christmas decorations, uh, because it's gonna take me most of the day, I've gotta be honest, uh, I wanna talk about uh, another car that looks like it's probably gonna be more of a facelift um, than a whole new car, and that's the BMW i3, the S in particular. Now, it looks to me as if they've uh, badged it up to be a sporty car with um, you know, much quicker, much better handling, Actually, uh, it's the same car. Yes, it's got more brake horsepower. They've lowered it a little bit, played with the mapping of the um, motors uh, and kind of 
given it a bit more of a sporty feel. They've um, changed some of the headlights, changed the interior a little bit. Ultimately, it's still an i3, it just goes a little bit quicker. And I do mean only a little bit quicker. Um, I think what they're trying to do is just eat that car out, that i3 concept, until the um, 3 Series, the full electric 3 Series becomes available, which is probably a year, 18 months time, at least. So um, I think we'll see these little facelifts on these kind of these original um, electric cars just until they can get their mainstream cars online with full electric motors. Um, it's a nice looking car. We all know what Life 3 is like. Uh, it's, um, it's no bad thing, but it's not a great improvement. It's just a, a bit of a facelift, but that will come the very early part of this year. Lots of conservatory sorted and um, the hallway. So before I get stuck into the lounge, because that's the big one, uh, I think I'm gonna have stops for some lunch. Um, and it gives me a chance to talk about the next month. So we've done January, done February, March-ish time. Uh, and this is a really, really interesting one for me because I think this is the first decent electric car at a reasonable price that is possibly gonna take customers away from Tesla. Uh, and it'll be really interesting to see how that kind of plays out really. Uh, and it's a Jaguar I-Pace. It's gonna be uh, an SUV uh, priced, I think, starting around 55, 60,000 um, pounds. Very quick. Uh, I think it's a 90 kilowatt hour battery, but more of a luxury car, something that does compare with uh, Tesla. Uh, possibly slightly cheaper, but coming from a brand that is well established um, and has proved themselves over many, many years. So it's going to be interesting that A, will they make enough? Um, vehicles to satisfy the demand um, and is the demand going to be there and I think it is because just the look of the thing looks incredible and B has it got enough different tech enough going on within it to make it a viable alternative to Tesla that's better and um, I can make a start on this lot in here now uh, I think this is going to take a little while but um, we're kind of moving on now towards the summer uh, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky because uh, the, the release dates aren't as obvious now. Um, manufacturers are kind of talking around quarters. So um, looking towards the summer here in the UK, uh, there's, there's two actually I'd like to sort of talk about together. That's a Hyundai Kona and uh, the Kia, uh, I think it's pronounced Nero. If I'm wrong, I'm sure you'll correct me. Um, both small SUVs. Both really, really good looking vehicles. Uh, probably gonna have something like a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack in them. Um, and should appeal to, to the masses, if you like. Um, certainly the Hyundai, already proven with the Arnic that people really, really like their vehicles. Um, and the price points are always very, very competitive. Uh, the little worry with these two is they're actually not gonna produce them in great numbers. I've got everything down now. Uh, it's just, I don't know if you can see the floor down here, I've just got to put everything away and get it up in the loft. Um, before I start doing that though, uh, the next car I want to talk about, and it's probably going to be released about the same time as um, Jaguar's I-Pace, is um, Audi's e-tron. Uh, another SUV, very similar specs probably to the, um, the I-Pace. We haven't really seen exactly what it's going to be yet, but um, it's out there being tested at the moment, which would indicate it's coming up time for its release. So um, kind of that summer time in the UK again, I think is probably uh, a reasonable time to think it will come, um, come to the market. Um, as I say, similar specs to the I-Pace, similar sort of pricing, uh, about 60,000 um, pounds. It, depending which model you get, it's basically it's undercutting the uh, Model X by about 10,000 pounds here in the UK. Uh, that's a decent amount of money for once again a proven um, manufacturer in Audi. I think these higher end vehicles are also going to have the benefit of making people look at the cheaper ones uh, that might not be able to go as far but where we've had Tesla kind of pushing the boundaries all the time we've now got um, proof of concept in uh, respected manufacturers uh, hopefully we'll get a few more people buying EVs. So uh, another really interesting car to look out for, for very much the same reasons as the Jaguar. Well, I think other than a few outside lights, of which I don't have many, um, I'm there.
it actually didn't take that long. Uh, so it brings us on to the final, I say the final car, there's two I want to talk about. Uh, one very briefly, the little Morgan three wheel EV that they're going to produce. Uh, I think that's just a really interesting car. Morgan, great British company, um, some lovely cars over the years and this is kind of their nod to the future I think. Um, so um, that's just one to watch out for. Uh, but the other big one of the year is a uh, will it won't it, will it arrive in right hand drive in the UK before the end of 2018. Um, I'm not going to hold my breath but uh, it'll be great if it did and Tesla's Model 3. Um, yeah, we, we are well, everybody's waiting for it. it. Production's picking up now. People are starting to get their, their deliveries. Does that mean they're going to do enough to get to the UK? I'm doubtful, I must admit. But I, I wanted to mention it because it wouldn't be right to, to talk about 2018 without mentioning it. The hope is they'll be here by the end of the year. Uh, it'll be great to have a look at one. Great to see what it's like. Great to see how it compares, not only price-wise, but also uh, quality-wise with the likes of the Nissan Leaf. Because... Um, you know, rightly or wrongly, I see Tesla as a more premium brand than the Nissan, but um, without putting the two together, this is the first time we've had the two companies almost um, kind of matching each other. That kind of wraps up the year of 2018 as far as I can see it. I may have missed one or two cars, but they for me are the, the, the main vehicles, the main EVs that we're going to see this year and potentially the ones that are actually going to make a difference um, to kind of how people view EVs, uh, how people think that uh, the world is going to um, advance forward without an internal combustion engine and um, I think these will be all be real proof of concept uh, that um, again in my opinion we don't need hydrogen, we don't need any other full fuel source, uh, this is the way forward and now there's some cars that prove it. So um, Hopefully you've enjoyed today's vlog. If you have, remember to like and share it. If you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel uh, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.